Welcome to the Art of Tuning In podcast with Maria Furlano, sharing insights, tools, and conversations to inspire your energetic well-being. Hello, everyone. Welcome. This is Maria Furlano. Thank you for joining me today on the Art of Tuning In podcast. This is episode 76, and we are talking about how to interpret the signs of your intuitive gifts, how to interpret your intuition. And what are the signs and what are your most easiest signs to interpret, your most easiest intuitive gifts? This week, I'm going to talk about the seeing and the hearing, the gifts of being able to have clairaudience, which is clear hearing, and to be clairvoyant, which is interpreted as clear visual or clear seeing. The clairs or I should say clair, is actually a French word and it means clear. So clairs begin to describe the various intuitive skill sets that someone might have. So this week, like I mentioned, I'm going to talk about seeing and hearing intuitively. And in our next episode, we're going to talk about knowing and feeling intuitively And then in another episode, we're going to talk about taste and smelling intuitively, as well as our dreams. But before we jump in, I just want to take a moment and say thank you so much for joining me. If you've been around for a while, I so appreciate you tuning in again. And if this is your first time tuning in, welcome to the Art of Tuning In podcast. I thank you very much for finding me and I... I'm so glad you're here. I never take it for granted when people tune in and take some time out of their day to listen in. I'm Maria Furlano, and I am a spiritual intuitive and medium. I'm a master teacher and a doctor of medical Qigong and physician of Chinese medicine. And when I say I'm a master teacher, I've been teaching the energetic arts for, oh my goodness, over 20 years. I started intuitive training and martial arts training and meditation training actually when I was 12 years old. And it's always been a part of my life. It has always felt like home to me. And I am so blessed that I can share these gifts and trainings with others. If you're someone who wants to expand their intuition, who wants to also cultivate the energy of their body, I hope you will go to theartoftuningin.com, sign up for my newsletter, and you'll receive all kinds of wonderful energetic insights as well as my upcoming courses, live events, and the online studio membership. I do have a brand new level one, the art of tuning in level one coming up for developing intuition. And I'm going to be sharing more about that very soon. So if you go on over to the art of tuning in, sign up for the newsletter, you'll also get a free root the mind visualization that's going to help you calm your mind and ease your anxiety, something that you can learn to do anywhere And you'll receive some great insights and updates, and I'd love to get to know you better. Thank you so much for being here. So let's talk about seeing, hearing intuitively. First of all, let's talk about seeing. And again, the traditional word for this is clairvoyant, clear seeing, clear visual. This often gets kind of confusing for people, what I've learned over time in teaching. I know for myself, when I really began to develop my intuition in a professional manner, meaning that I was working with others professionally, I didn't understand the clear visual part of it because I thought in the beginning that it only meant that if you saw auras, if you saw colors, that you were visual. And that's not true. And so I want to dispel that myth right now and talk about the ways that you probably are seeing, that you probably are clairvoyant, and you may not realize it. So again, remember that I'm going to break this down into three separate podcast episodes. And so today we're going to be talking about the hearing and seeing, but in the next one, we're going to go into the knowing and the feeling, and then we're going to go into taste, smell, and dreams. And so there are many, many different intuitive gifts to explore. Some people have a combination of all intuitive gifts. 
And some people have one or two most dominant intuitive gifts, things that are most natural for them that they use all the time. Of course, if you are wanting to expand your intuition and you want to expand these gifts, you can. You can become very proficient in one or two of these gifts. And then as you cultivate your energy, especially through the Qigong that I teach and and through meditation and practicing and allowing yourself to clear your energy and to balance your energy, you begin to open up intuitive areas that you may not have known were possible. And it is an amazing, amazing journey. So with the clear vision, with being able to see how I like to describe it best is that I have a movie in my mind. So I have only seen aura colors two times in my life. And both of those times were under very strong emotional circumstances. But I don't normally walk around and see people's aura colors, but I do see people's energy. So let me describe how that is. And I'm hoping that you'll be able to see how you see. When you see it's like having a movie in your mind. It's, it's like you, you know that you're seeing it in your mind, but it's out in front of you. And you begin to interpret information that's being shown to you. Sometimes it looks like a movie, like actual scenes in a movie. Sometimes it's a flash, like a picture. And sometimes when you see people's energy, but you're not necessarily seeing colors, you see things kind of pop out. Maybe you see areas around the person that shine a little brighter or that draw you in. Maybe you see the energy fields, but again, maybe you're not seeing color and maybe you are. Absolutely. If you see colors, you have no doubt that you see visually, but for a lot of people, who don't see colors, they don't think necessarily that they see energy. And I believe that we all pick up energy from others. We're all picking up what's in front of us. So for example, if we see somebody, we can tell how they feel. We can also tell how their health is. And some people will see that, you know, like, like I said, you may see something in their energy field that comes out to you, like it makes itself known to you. You may interpret that you're seeing somebody's facial expression and you can see how their mood is. But then beyond that, there is an energy that you're picking up and that you're sensing that you can tell how somebody actually feels. And of course, you can do that through your sense of feeling. But visually, when your eyes lock onto someone, You are sensing all kinds of information. The key with this is to, first of all, know that you can do this. Know that there is information being presented to you on a visual plane that if you're not familiar with it or used to doing it, it may be hard for you to see right now, but that it actually is there. Sometimes when we open our mind and we're able to know that there is something different You know, maybe we're not used to seeing it, but we understand, oh, this is a new possibility. I see that actually it does exist to be able to see people's energy. Your knowing your self-understanding of what used to be true and what is true for you now, they shift. And so you begin to open yourself in new ways to new possibilities, and that allows you to be able to see differently. So just like with anything in life, if we feel that we are ready to learn something new, if we're ready to open ourselves up, new possibilities show themselves to you. And oftentimes we need a guide to help us to be able to see, sense, feel, however we are interpreting energy, to be able to know that it's a true possibility and to be able to help us to interpret. Another thing that happens quite often, especially if you're someone who works with other people in body work, in acupuncture, in any kind of physical contact with someone, I know that for myself, what would happen early on, I did massage therapy for many years and I would be able to see little squares or sometimes gold triangles 
on someone's skin when there was an area that needed to be worked on or there was an area that was causing the problem. And a lot of times it wasn't an area necessarily that the person felt, but it was the area that needed to be opened up in order for the energy to flow. Now, through, my, of course, my later training in Chinese medicine and acupuncture, I understood that I was actually seeing meridians and I was seeing acupuncture points that needed to be opened. But for, but for me, in the very beginning, this was something that just kind of naturally began to flow throughout the body work that I was doing with the person. These little points would just flash for me. And as long as I kept myself in an aligned place and kept doing my work and I didn't try to figure them out or try to second guess them or try to see them again, you know, try to push myself, they would continue to unfold as I did my work. And it was so natural for me that I really never thought about it. I never thought that this was a part of seeing. And so again, I bring this up because you may be seeing visually energy in so many different ways, and it's so natural for you that you actually don't realize that you're doing it. But because, again, you don't see colors like an aura color, you may be doubting yourself. So this is why I want to really encourage you to pay attention to what flashes in front of you, to pay attention to what you're picking up in the mind, you know, your movie in the mind, and to stay relaxed with it. And you're going to hear me say this in every single one of these episodes, but staying relaxed in any kind of intuitive work is key. And this is one of the reasons why we learn so many cultivation practices. We learn to work with our body. We learn to work with our breath. We learn to let go of tension. We learn to balance the energy, our emotional energy, and how we're flowing in our body. Because the more relaxed we are, the more we expand our own energetic system and the more we can pick up energy that we are sensing, in this case, that we are visually seeing. So one of the things that you might want to try if you haven't already to help your visual skill, you want to really learn how to relax your neck and your shoulders. You want to open up everything with your breath and you want to relax your jaw. And you want to relax your eyes. So even though we are sensing from an intuitive place, when we see things, we do see them in a visual space. And sometimes when we are beginning, we sense something, we see something, and then we try to bring it into focus because we're so surprised by what we're seeing. But when we try to bring it into focus with our eyes, we're actually going to lose the image most often because that's not where it's coming from, but it's where we're interpreting it from. So I hope this makes sense. So when I say there's a movie in my mind, I've learned that even though I might be looking in front of me, and if you've ever worked with me, you know that I'll often look over to the right side because this is where I will see the images. When I look to the left side, that's where my guides are. And so you might see yourself look over in a certain area in front of you, but you know that the information is coming in your third eye, which is in between your eyebrows on your forehead. And you know that it's, it's moving in a way that is not like reading a newspaper or a magazine or looking at pictures in front of you. It's a different sensation. And so you want to stay relaxed because the moment you really try to figure it out or bring it into focus, you're switching your brain. You're no longer using this beautiful intuitive side of yourself, but you're trying to figure it out. You're moving into logic. So we want to stay very relaxed. That's key. And you want to learn how to tune into your breath so that it's nice low in your belly so that your shoulders can relax and so your neck can relax and so that your eyes can relax and your jaw can relax. So everything with relaxation is really important in all the intuitive senses because 
we are sensing from a very different space in ourselves. We are sensing from energetic flow. When you begin to open these up with Qigong, with yoga, with breath, with becoming aware of your tension spots and letting them go, you might want to try laying down in the grass under a tree because you're going to be looking straight up at the sky so you don't want the sun in your eyes. And ideally, you want a clear sky behind the tree without clouds if possible. And as you lay down, totally relaxed, totally comfortable. You might even want to put something underneath your knees. You might want to put your head on a a very low pillow. You just want to be really, really comfortable so that your breath can flow all the way down into your belly. And as you gaze up at the tree, you're going to be looking at the tree's branches, but you're going to relax your eyes completely. They're going to be open but they're going to be so soft and so relaxed. And again, your jaw, keep your jaw a little bit open, keep it relaxed. You're going to gaze at the tree, but your gaze is going to change to where you begin to see the energy around the tree, around the branches. And what will probably happen, if you've never done this before, what you're going to notice is that your vision is going to go in and out. So the moment that you begin to sense that there is an energy field, even around just one branch, right? Or around the whole tree, you're probably going to get excited and you're going to try to see it. So you're going to, oh, you're going to focus a little bit more. And as soon as you do that, it's going to disappear. Probably for most people, it's just going to disappear. And so then you're going to go back and you're going to breathe and you're going to relax and your mind is going to doubt yourself and you're going to go through the whole thing and then you're going to relax again and you're going to see it again. And you're going to learn through this exercise how much your system needs to relax and go within so that it can start to begin to see new things. And when I say new things, what I mean by that is we're not used to in our culture walking around and seeing the energy around things. We're not used to seeing the energy around nature. We're not used to seeing the energy around people. And when you begin to get used to that, when you realize that it's really there and you begin to see it the way that you see it, and you begin to see all the nuances, and again, you don't. some people may see colors, but you don't have to see colors. You may see fluid movement, almost like, you know, when there's heat on the ground, when it's super hot out and you have, you know, the heat that rises from the cement or, or the parking lot, and you see these little waves of heat that is very common when you begin to look at energy around people or around animals or around trees. We use trees because trees are so big and they have such vibrant energy that it's easier to start with a tree, a big tree, than it is maybe, you know, like with a small plant or a flower. So, and also being able to lay down and being able to relax our body is really important so we don't have to hold our structure up. But as you look at the beautiful tree, you may see the waves. You may see color, but you may see waves, or you may see darker spots and lighter spots. But don't have any kind of preconceived notion in your mind of what is right and what is wrong. Just begin the exercise and relax and get in tune with your body and get in tune with the tree. One of the things that I always do that I didn't mention in the beginning is when I'm going to lay down and begin to gaze at a tree, I will always connect in with the tree with my heart and I will ask the tree, first of all, permission to look at its energy. And as I'm breathing and as I'm tuning into myself, I simply thank the tree for its beauty. I thank the tree for its shade. I thank the tree for its beautiful healing abilities. And I say, may I practice with you? May I practice seeing your energy? And listen, listen, feel, see, sense the vibration of the tree. And then when you have permission from this beautiful tree, you should hear a yes or a no or whatever it is that you hear. 
then of course, if you get a yes, then you begin your gazing practice. (laughs) And it is not only beautiful and fun, but it is really nurturing for yourself as well, because you're grounded into the earth, you're feeling the earth on your back, you're being in nature, you're breathing deeply, which is absolutely relaxing and restoring your nervous system. And you are learning to allow yourself to be with energy in a new way. Let's move into clear audience now or clear hearing. Clear audience is very simple in the sense that it is hearing something within your intuitive ear you know is not your voice. This is often a sound. It can be music. It can be a guide speaking with you. And it can be in mediumship where you are transcribing or hearing to transcribe the information of someone who has transitioned, who has passed. Also, clairaudience presents itself a lot just when someone is waking up and the person might hear their name and it's not in their voice. It's, it's a voice that's very clear. One of the most common questions that I get asked in any of the intuitive work is how do you know, in this case, with hearing, that what you're hearing intuitively is coming from a good place? And this is a great question because I do teach all about energetic protection. All of my training since I have been little has included energetic protection, and I have found it to be incredibly enlightening and incredibly useful, nothing to be afraid of, and truly empowering. And it's all about learning frequencies. So when we are hearing, what you learn to do is to interpret the frequency of what you're hearing. You learn over time, for example, to interpret the frequency of your guides. You learn to interpret the frequency of your angels. You learn to interpret the frequency of Gaia, Mother Earth. You learn to interpret the frequency of the universe. Everything has a frequency. You learn to interpret the frequency of the loved ones that are coming through that have passed over. Or if you are interpreting for other people and you are hearing information to interpret to intuitively for other people who have passed over, you learn that frequency. You learn where that spirit is. So you are not afraid of it because you understand your sacred alignment. You've learned that sacred alignment. You've learned the skills to make sure that you are aligned in your energy and you are intentionally focused in knowing that you will pick up only the energy that is, how I like to say it, divinely aligned. So this is a little side note into energetic protection, but it comes up so often when people tend to get afraid of intuitively what they're hearing, especially, for example, if they are woken up in the morning or in the middle of the night or from a nap and they hear a voice, a very clear voice that is not their own most often you'll hear your name being said. And then sometimes, you know, for some people, they will have a message that comes through. And for other people, really, really often, nothing will happen. You'll just hear your name, you'll wake up, and that will be that. And it can be very frustrating because you're like, where's the other information? Some people, like I mentioned, will hear music. That is a beautiful, beautiful frequency and vibration. And there are different levels. There are different levels of frequency that different people have the ability to hear. Usually, people will share that they hear this intuitive audio in one ear over the other ear. For me, I hear in my right ear, but it that doesn't matter. Some people can hear in their left ear, they can hear in their right ear, they can hear in both ears. Because what you want to do is to be able to determine the difference that it is truly intuitive and that it is truly coming from a frequency that is intuitive over, let's say, your own worries or fears. There is a very different frequency. Again, I use that word because 
It's the way that we tell that this is coming from one of our guides. So for example, if I meet my best friend for lunch, I know her frequency. If I'm with my husband, I know his frequency. If I meet somebody in the street who is very angry, I know their frequency. If I meet somebody who is very sad or however they're acting, I can sense their frequency. It's the exact same thing when you're dealing with your guides or angelic realm or people who have passed over that you are now receiving information from. Everything has a frequency and you will learn to be able to recognize that frequency and where that energy of that frequency is aligned. Another question that I get asked a lot is about ear ringing. You know, when people have ringing in their ears, they will ask, is this Claire audience? And in my experience, and especially in my medical experience as a Chinese medicine practitioner, it is not Claire audience when you have ringing in your ears. There is a very <laughs> different sound when you're, for example, hearing the music of a very high frequency, of a very different realm. That is a very beautiful sound, and it is so incredibly difficult to ever describe that it is not ear ringing. So a lot of times people have high-pitched ear ringing. Sometimes they can have low, lower-pitched ear ringing, and it can almost be like a whoosh, like almost like an ocean sound. That generally is some sort of medical issue that's happening within the ear and usually an energetic issue. A lot of times high-pitched ear ringing can be from an imbalance in the liver energy, meaning not that there's something wrong with the liver, but the emotional imbalance of the liver that we have a lot of anger and frustration to release. And it's causing the energy to move up in the body in such a way that it presents into this high-pitched ear ringing. And then a lot of times on the other side, when you have a lower frequency ear ringing and it is like a whoosh or an ocean <laughs> sound, that can be a kidney deficiency. And again, we're not talking about the organ of that you need, you know, you need to worry, but we're talking about an energy deficiency in the kidney energy. And that needs to be cultivated. It needs to be rebuilt and it's showing that the body isn't holding and fortifying the energy of the body enough. So ear ringing is different than intuitive audio listening, hearing, and knowing. And I just want to bring that up because that is a question that comes up quite a bit, especially people who are around electronics. You can hear a high ring. A ring is also different than Claire audience. So as we begin to wrap up this episode, let me finish with how do you start to listen? How do you tune up <laughs> that Claire audience in yourself? One of the best ways that I have found is we need to learn to get very quiet with ourselves. And the biggest reason for this, of course, is not only to be able to tune in and hear a different frequency, but to be able to truly know the difference between your own inner critic talking to you and intuitive spirit talking to you. Very different frequencies, very different conversations. So an in, a true intuitive spiritual connection, audio, clear audience, will always be loving. If you are ever picking up something that isn't loving, that isn't supportive, that isn't in divine light, then stop the conversation, of course, and check in and see, is this your own inner critic? Learning how to get quiet with yourself and then, of course, learning how to focus your intention really allows you to open up and direct where you're going to focus your energy, meaning what you're going to tune into. So I always talk about, of course, the art of tuning in, right? That's what we do. But how we focus our in 
tuition, how we focus, how we tune in is incredibly important all the time because we are going to deal with emotional issues every single day. We're going to be dealing with this 3D world that is very concrete, very dense, right? And when we're shifting to an intuitive state, when we're really listening to a higher frequency, we need to shift our vibration so that we are able to reach the frequency that is above the density. I hope that makes sense. And when we're able to reach the frequency, when we're able to expand our frequency, relax and expand our frequency, when reach that higher vibration that is above the density, that higher vibration is able to drop down and also meet our frequency. But it has to be a two-part meeting, okay? And this is important. This is very important to understand how you speak to yourself, what your chronic thoughts are. One of the things that I'm always going over and over with my students is what are your chronic thoughts? What are you talking about inside of yourself? Where are they coming from? Because once we move into those thought patterns, especially that are not supportive of ourselves, we are completely out of the intuitive and spiritual realm. We are into our own story and into our own frequency that is quite a lower vibration than what it is we're tuning into to receive information. So just know that 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 spiritual knowing is always loving and it's always supportive and it's usually fast and it's usually very simple <laughs> we i know often i would love to have these really long conversations you know these i'd like to have these really detailed conversations with spirit but it doesn't usually work that way also i have said this before, I'll say this again, the quality of your question allows for the quality of the answer, meaning you want to have a clear question. You want to not just show up with spirit. And this includes, you know, I'll I'll tell people when they'll come to me for an intuitive reading, I'll say, think about your questions. Think about what it is you really want to know. What is your soul really, truly wanting? Because spirit will connect with that and then the information will flow. When we show up and we show up full, full of integrity, full of alignment, fully in ourselves, Spirit drops in and the information is present for us, but it is clear, it is quick, and it is precise. And there's a reason for that. Why should they waste their energy? Why should they waste their energy with a lot of stuff that's not necessary? We do that here on the earth and we waste a lot of energy. So think about it that way because you may be getting information again through audio when you get really quiet, but it's fast. You know, maybe you hear something or you sense that you might have heard something and you know that it's not your voice and you know that it's a different frequency, but it's very fast. It's very light. Maybe it's even one word and you think, oh, that wasn't anything and you just kind of blow it off. Remember that intuitive information is fast and it is direct. And a lot of times you can miss it if you're not used to paying attention to it. So you get used to that. You get used to being in the frequency of receiving intuitive information. You you learn it's part of your lifestyle. It's just how you move through life. But in the beginning, if this is new for you, give yourself some slack because you are listening in a very different way than you ever have before. Thank you so much for joining me today and keep your eye out for the next two episodes where we're going to be going over intuitive knowing and intuitive feeling. And then in another episode, we're going to talk about the intuition of taste, of smell, and the difference in dreams. Please go to theartoftuningin.com. Stay in touch. Sign up for my energetic insights. I'd love to share more with you, get to know you, and support you on your journey. Thanks so much for being here. I'll see you in the next episode. Thank you for tuning in. If you'd like to learn more and elevate your energetic well-being, I invite you to visit theartoftuningin.com, where you can learn all about our online studio. I look forward to meeting you there.